mercy and peace be to you from God our Father and from our risen and living Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. You know, it was uh, last week when we celebrated again Jesus' birth. Pastor Krause in his sermon reminded us that even though we celebrated Jesus' birth again, it's really an amazing event. And so he encouraged us to be amazed. And I tell you, as I was reading the scripture lessons assigned for this week, oh, those so many verses. I had pastor's words in my head. And I tell you, I stand here today still amazed. I mean, I have goosebumps just thinking that our Lord, God himself, humbled himself to be born a baby. The creator of everything, visible, invisible, the creator of everything was born a baby. Truly amazing. And I thought of John's words. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was God in the beginning. And now, today, we celebrate Jesus' circumcision and naming. This is the beginning of our Lord's life. And he began that life in the arms of his foster father as he went to be circumcised and named. On the eighth day, when it was time to circumcise him, he was named Jesus, the name the angel had given him before he had been conceived. So here was ordinary, faithful Joseph following God's law circumcising his son, his foster son. Here is ordinary, faithful Joseph following God's angel's command to name this baby Jesus. Here is ordinary, faithful Joseph following God's law and God's command. God used this ordinary person, Joseph, to begin Jesus' life perfectly. It's amazing. It truly is. Now, God no longer commands that uh, circumcision occur on this day or that day, but Jesus does commission us to go, therefore, and baptize all nations in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. If we go back in time, back to the second century, uh, one of the patriarchs of the church, one of the church fathers, Justin Martyr, said that baptism is the New Testament's circumcision. So every parent who brings a child to be baptized is being faithful, just like Joseph. And in that baptism, in that baptism, Jesus' name is placed on that baby. And in Jesus' name comes faith. Ordinary water. God uses ordinary water combined with his word and the command of Jesus to baptize, to birth faith. This is amazing. Truly amazing. Now, we just celebrated Jesus' birth. Today, we celebrate the circumcision and naming of Jesus. And these, because we've done them all our lives, and the church has done it nearly 2,000 years, 
maybe through repetition, they seem ordinary. But they certainly aren't. Indeed, they are not only not ordinary, but they're amazing because Jesus, because he was born, because he was circumcised, because he was named, started his life perfectly. And as he grew, as he gained strength, as he gained wisdom, he followed every law, every command, every commission of God perfectly. So that when that day came, when that day came when it was that God said, you will lay your life down for all people, for all sin. Jesus did so. His perfect life was the all-atoning sacrifice. His death on the cross wiped away all sin for all people forever. Now, that is truly amazing. In baptism, some of you may remember your baptism. Most of you, if you're like me, were babies, so you have no memory of it. Maybe some of you have seen many baptisms, so you don't think it's so very special. But again, think of baptism, that ordinary water, with God's Word, that application of ordinary water with God's Word is placing Jesus' name, is putting faith in that baptized person. And don't forget, baptism isn't just for babies. Baptism is for any person of any age, regardless of anything that they've ever done. The Holy Spirit draws that person into baptism. God places Jesus' name on that person in baptism and accepts that person as an adopted child, son, daughter, into his family. Amazing. So, what does carrying a name mean? Some of you, because of your name, might uh, be allowed into certain clubs, certain groups. Maybe because of your name, since, let's say, you know, last night was New Year's Eve. Maybe because of your name, you were invited to a New Year's Eve party. You can think of some examples, right, of what your name allows you or lets you do. I'll tell you for me, I grew up for many years uh, in hotels. My father was a hotel person. Sometimes he was a general manager. Later on, he was not only the general manager, but the owner. So I wasn't just David. I was Mr. Roscoe's son. I had my dad's name. So, there were really very few, if any, doors locked to me in any of the properties. If I wanted a meal, almost any time of day, I could go to the restaurant, into the kitchen, and someone would make me a meal. And most, not all, of the employees treated me special, not because I was David, but because I was Mr. Roscoe's son. And as special as it was, and still is, to be Mr. Roscoe's son, consider how amazing and special and infinitely more beautiful it is to be in God's family, to carry Jesus' name. And when you have Jesus' name. Jesus has opened the door of heaven for you. When you carry Jesus' name, think of that banquet, that glorious feast prepared 
by God. And think of the reconciliation that Jesus' name has made for you. And think of having Jesus' name, meaning that you will never have to suffer the abandonment and the complete exile from God's eternal love. That's what having Jesus' name means. But then also, you know, carrying my father's name <laughs> in the hotels carried a responsibility. My father expected me to act a certain way. You know, uh, he expected me to be better than any of his employees. He expected me to do what he told me to do. And then he even expected me to do things that I should just do. I remember always, you know, he'd walk around. If there was a little piece of paper on the floor, he'd pick it up. You know, it's things like that he just expected me to do. You can only imagine, I stand here before you confess, that I let my father down many, many times in many, too many ways. So, think of caring Jesus' name on you. It carries a responsibility, right? Caring Jesus' name means that we who carry his name should love as Jesus loves. Carrying Jesus' name means that when you have the opportunity, open your mouth or with your actions, show people Jesus' love. Tell them of Jesus' birth, of Jesus' life, of Jesus' death, of his resurrection, and of his promise to return. Carrying Jesus' name means that you can share God's love, his reconciliation, his forgiveness of sins with anybody, right? And you know the truth. Just as I disappointed my earthly father, there have been way too many times when I have not carried Jesus' name faithfully, properly. I have fallen way short. But here's the good news. Here's great news. Jesus, God's one and only Son, carried God's name perfectly. Jesus, God's one and only Son, followed every one of God's laws, every command, did everything. Jesus, God's Son, died so that in his death, every person who believes on him has been washed clean and will, on that day that he returns, be in heaven, the door wide open, and feasting with God and all other believers at that eternal banquet which God has prepared. Now that is truly amazing. I leave each one of you now, each one of you amazing, wonderful, not perfect, I assume, uh, but forgiven and dearly loved adopted children of God with God's blessing. Just as God told Moses to tell his brother Aaron to put my name, God says, put my name in this blessing on my dearly loved children and they will carry my name. So, the Lord bless you through Jesus. The Lord keep you in Jesus. The Lord make his face shine upon you through Jesus. And the Lord be gracious to you through Jesus. 
and the Lord turn his face towards you through Jesus and give you Jesus' peace. Amen. And may this year be a truly amazing year. God's blessing be on you, and may you recognize all of the blessings that you receive from God. This is my prayer. Amen.